All right, she wrote a story so raw, so real, so haunting about her father's suicide two decades ago. And the Washington Post republished it, and journalist Roxanne Roberts has heard from so many people left behind in the aftermath of suicide. She may have even saved a life or two or maybe more. Thank you so much for being here, Roxanne. It's really I, a pleasure. It is so wonderful to have you. You have been through so much, and you are such a gifted writer. So important to share your story. Tell me about the people you've heard from after the story was republished. Well, I think the most important thing, and I've heard from hundreds, and I literally wrote back to every single person wow. who wrote me, is that suicide is still a topic that we don't talk about much. We're afraid to talk about. We're ashamed about it. And it really isn't. Depression isn't something to be ashamed about. Suicide is not something to be ashamed about. But the less we talk about it, the more it stays hidden and all those complex feelings sort of stay buried. So a lot of the people who wrote me sort of were pouring their hearts out to me because they thought I had given voice to some of the complex feelings that came in the aftermath of a suicide. Absolutely, and you wrote in very vivid detail, you know, uh, lots of things that really stayed with me, stayed with so many people, you know, cleaning up blood, uh, cleaning up your oh, life afterwards, you so know, many things that just really hit for people. For every person that kills themselves, there are probably a dozen people who live with the aftermath of mm -hmm. that. And what I'm trying to do, and what I try to do with that piece is to help people give voice to not just their grief, but their anger and their confusion and their shame and a lot of guilt. There's so much guilt. And we want to do everything we can to help somebody who is depressed and dealing with suicidal thoughts. But I also want to help everybody who is left behind to try to process this crisis in their life and help them understand that they didn't do anything wrong if someone they love kills themselves. So you know, we talked about if someone dies from cancer, we know what to say. We're very sorry, but when someone dies from suicide, people don't know really what to say to the people left behind. They don't, and they also tend not to give people permission to feel anything but sadness, like any other death. And suicide is just more complex than that. People feel anger. People feel abandoned. Uh, some of the emails I got were unbelievably heartbreaking because those lingering feelings have gone on for decades and they just didn't feel they could really share them. Mm -hmm. um, the article at least gave people a way to say, here are some of the things I've been feeling about all these years. And you know, I've heard from people in their 80s and some in their 90s, as well as some very young people. It, it doesn't change, the feelings don't change regardless of when this happens to you or how it happens. It, it's just devastating. What should you say? That's a, a lot of what we want to do here tonight is give people the tools to say the right thing. What, what, what would be the right thing? I think the first thing is if you have someone in your home who is depressed, you say you have nothing to be ashamed of. This is a disease, you know, that it takes strength to ask for help. Mm -hmm. It's not a weakness. And you, you are not at fault for being depressed. But I do think people who are depressed have a responsibility to try to get help. And most of the time, people who love them want them to get help, even if the person who's depressed thinks that the world would be better off if they weren't there. The other thing I'd say is once a suicide has happened in your family, you don't have anything to be ashamed about. Something terrible has happened to the person you loved, and something terrible has happened to you. Mm. And you need permission to talk about all the complex sadness and the what ifs and everything that goes reeling. It's perfectly natural to want to protect the people we love and sometimes we can't do it. And that part is so heartbreaking if someone dies. Uh, but a suicide probably is the worst death in terms of those feelings. It's very hard to get over, and I appreciate so much you being here, and thank you for your gift. Telling your story really helps other people to tell theirs. Roxanne Roberts with the Washington Post.